Good day, everybody. We uh, have another daily devotions. We are getting to the end of the book of Deuteronomy. It is March 9th, and we are looking at Deuteronomy chapters 30 and 31. So we finished uh, yesterday with uh, promises, blessings, and cursings. Talked about that covenant renewal in Moab, and now uh, starting with chapter 30, we get um, uh, the beginning of affirmations that God is faithful and God will continue to remain faithful. Uh, they do not have to concern themselves that God is fickle in any way and will decide that God is not interested in being their God. Um, and you get some hints at uh, centuries later in exile, you get in verse uh, Four of chapter 30, even if you are exiled to the ends of the world, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will bring you back. So as I suggested yesterday, I think it was yesterday I suggested that we might have uh, some editorial uh, additions, insertions here from later on, as later editors are putting this material together. Uh, perhaps we've got an editor who uh, is doing this after the exile several centuries later and shapes the material uh, to uh, uh, foreshadow the coming exile. Again, you also get, again, this idea that, that Israel uh, is going to uh, be disobedient. It just almost seems inevitable that Israel is not going to do what, they're, what God wants them to do. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that Israel is beyond hope and beyond help and that they are uh, resigned to, to fit to their fate. Um, you get exhortations in this chapter to choose life. And you get uh, the, God is saying to them, uh, that uh, this, this covenant is not too difficult to teach. It's, in fact, it's, in, it's within your reach. There's very interesting passage in 30, starting with verse 11. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross on the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and is in your heart for you to observe. Interesting. So uh, the covenant is near. And how is it near? Well, it's near in those who read and interpret Moses, Joshua, the priests. Uh, who will become interpreters of the law, who know it and then interpret it before the people. Uh, remember that this is a time and place, unlike today, what you and I are used to. We don't have copies of the, they don't have copies of the Bible everywhere. They don't have copies of Deuteronomy that they can keep in their, in their homes, like we have Bibles that we can refer to. So the only way they're going to know this is to is to hear it read and interpreted by those who have it. But because of that, uh, God says, this is not too difficult for you. So what we really get here, I think, is that it isn't that Israel is unable to obey the law and be obedient to the covenant. It's that all too often they are unwilling. And, you know, I think that speaks to us today, that the problem often with us in discipleship is not inability, it's unwillingness. One of the things that I've always uh, felt for, that I have felt for a long time and believe for a long time is the problem of our discipleship is not our inability to be disciples of Jesus, uh, that, that because, but because uh, we have the spirit that assists us. Uh, we certainly have our own will and volition because we have to want to do it ourselves. But the problem a lot of times with our discipleship is not that we're unable to be who Jesus wants us to be, but we're unwilling. 
uh, we have other things that we desire and that we're attracted to and other things that we really think are right to do because that's the common sense wisdom of the world, but it's not the Christian thing to do. So it's not an inability, it is an unwillingness. And that's what we get here, uh, that the people are just going to be unwilling to keep this covenant of being obedient to the only true God, the God of Israel, and to follow that God and to follow in that God's ways, even when it means going against the grain of the surrounding cultures in which they are in. Their hearts, unfortunately, get led astray because that's what they choose. So we get to chapter 31, and here we finally get what we've known is coming, and that is Joshua to become Moses' successor. Moses uh, takes note of his age, that he's 120, and he's no all longer able to get about the way that he wants or the way that he used to when he was younger. Uh, so Joshua gets commissioned here, and Moses gives him some words of encouragement but he also gives Joshua warnings of the people's rebellion and that God, uh, that they will, uh, because of their rebellion, that they will find life in the promised land, not as they had hoped, not because God hasn't delivered, but because they haven't been faithful. However, notice what you get here at the end of chapter eight. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So Joshua, the people will not be faithful, but I will be. Uh, you can count on me to always be with you and with the people. And so even when things are not going as you hope them, hope that they go, my presence will abide with you. And that's something we remember even today, that in the midst of life's trials and tribulations, whether we cause that we cause our own trials and tribulations, or whether they come upon us through no fault of our own, God promises to be with us. Uh, verse nine, remember, we, we talked about the sabbatical year, that every seventh year, uh, that's our cancel, slaves are released, property goes back to their owner, uh, that everything is made fair and right again. Uh, here is uh, a reminder that every seventh year, the law is to be read to the people every seventh year. Now, that seems like a long time, right? Uh, Obviously, there's a lot to read in the law, and uh, so one would think that if you really want the people to know the law, it would be read more often, but it is commanded to be read every seventh year. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't read it more often, but at least every seventh year in a sabbatical year when everything is getting a rest, so you are to rest as you listen to the law being read. And the law must be remembered. And the only way it can be remembered is if it's passed on. The only way it can be remembered is transmission. Priests read it, interpret it to the people, and the people hear and understand. And what they hear, they teach to their children. And when that transmission, when that tradition of telling the stories of, the, of, of God's people by remembering the commandments by re being reminded of the covenant God has made with his people, then it secures the obedience of future generations. It is when that transmission is broken, when that tradition fails, that you end up uh, with unfaithfulness to the covenant because, because a future generation will not know it. If they're not told it, they will not know it. And so they pass it on, and that's exactly what we must continue uh, to do today. And in fact, we have even less excuse, right? Because uh, we have Bibles. We, we have uh, more than one, a lot of us, and we get to read it and we get to pass it along to our children and actually open it up to them and go through it with them. So we have less excuse when it comes to passing on these great traditions of our faith so that our children and grandchildren will be obedient as well. And so that they also can pass it on to their children and their grandchildren. And so it goes on and on. That's the way that God intends for it to be. 
Now, the uh, uh, chapter, chapter 31 uh, ends with Moses, uh, with God telling Moses, uh, uh, you need to write down a song. Maybe it's Moses, let's call it his swan song, his grand finale, a song uh, to be sung before the people uh, so that not only will th this song remind them of God and God's ways and what they're supposed to do, but it's a song that they can sing through the ages. It's a song that will help them remember what God desires, remember what God has done, remember the character and faithfulness of God through the singing of this song. Friends, we know, we know for sure that that music that singing songs that help us to remember words like nothing else and so if you are singing the words of the covenant in a sense you will remember the words so put it down to music so it may be transmitted and continued so we don't have that song in chapter 31 we will get it in chapter 32 Tomorrow, we will finish the last three chapters of the book of Deuteronomy, and uh, then we will head into the book of Joshua. So let us pray. Gracious God, thank you that you give to us your covenant and your wisdom and your will, and you, you give it to us that it's near to us, that we can access it. Uh, it isn't too far above us or down below us. It's where we can reach it. And forgive us for when we haven't been faithful in reaching for that wisdom that you have given to us. And help us to be faithful in transmitting this faith, this great faith of ours, to those around us and to those who come after us, that they too may be able to be faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, have a great rest of the day, friends. And uh, we'll finish up Deuteronomy tomorrow.